Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. Welcome back. Today I have a video to help better understand flinch and flinch reducing perks in Destiny 2. Kind of a passion project for me. It's to kind of clear things up. It's something I should have done months ago. These types of videos are to arm yourself with information and I'm going to throw a lot at you in this one. I think I do have the correct visual test to show you and the test to show this perk in action. And also, if you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. We have a cool group. We're 8,000 away from 100,000 total subscribers, and we would love for you to be a part of it. So let's jump right in. First things first, let's remember and understand how Flinch works in Destiny 2. Number one, flinch goes in the direction you're being shot at. If from the side, the flinch is horizontal. If shot in the front, the flinch is more vertical. Number two is that flinch works off of the enemy's critical spot, off of the hitbox, meaning that if you're on the hitbox, on the head, flinch is going to throw you off once you're hit. Surprisingly, when you're off of that hitbox, off of the head, when you get shot, flinch will throw you back onto the critical spot. This is multi-directional. You could be up in the top left of the hitbox or the head, the crit spot, and when you get hit, the flinch will throw you back onto it. If you're off to the bottom right of your target, when you're hit, the flinch is going to jump up to the top left, right back on, that way you can land the headshot. An easy test is going in with a 180 RPM hand cannon to show their ease of use. 180 is like trust or two headshot, two body shot TTKs. So if you were to aim at someone's abdomen and literally not touch the right stick, the aim, you're not doing anything but hitting the fire button. You take your shot, it hits the body, when they shoot you, the flinch will throw it up to the head. Then you take your shot, they shoot you, it's going to throw you off of the hitbox but close to it. But with magnetism, you take a shot, it hits them. They're going to shoot you one more time, and it's going to land you right back on the head. And that's going to be the final blow. And that's without touching anything but the fire button. And that's why things like Luna and Not Forgotten are kind of crazy to me, because you can land a couple headshots, then aim off to the left or to the right of their leg, and then when they shoot you, you're thrown back on, then you have Magnificent Hell. Kind of crazy. So that's a quick rundown, and it's important to know how this works, because it's a base to know how and why unflinching is working. It's the main reason why unflinching works so well. And by the end of the video, I do hope to show why unflinching armor should be on you with the weapon type that you're choosing, especially in the Crucible. To show what's going on, I have a Black Scorpion Fast Firing Scout, and for all of the unflinching tests, I have on Enhanced Scout Unflinching. It's a good recipe to show what's going on. Fast Fire Rate, Large Magazine. On my armor, Pre-Armor 2.0, I have an easily accessed Enhanced Scout Unflinching. The perk states, Unflinching in general reduces flinching from incoming fire while aiming. In this case, with Enhanced, it greatly reduces flinching from incoming fire while aiming scout rifles. That's what the perk states, but it works differently. This is how that works. For unflinching to take effect, the act of you shooting and taking fire have to happen at the same exact time. Both things need to happen. So when doing a flinch test in this clip, there's no unflinching on. It's working like we've talked about at the start of the video. You get hit, it throws you off. You get hit again, it throws you back on, over and over. With enhanced unflinching on, it does the same thing. It goes off, then on. You could say that in some instances, that the actual distance that travels when you're getting flinched off isn't doing anything at all. It's slight, if anything. And look at that distance and say, yeah, it works, or maybe not, maybe it doesn't. But for what it's worth, yes, it does work slightly, and I mean slightly as far as this type of distance. We're going to view this as a mechanic, and this mechanic is important later on. The Black Scorpion has vertical recoil. It rises up as I hold down the button. For these tests, I'm not aiming at all. All I'm doing is holding down the fire button. That's the only input. No recoil compensation or anything else like that. Just aiming in one area, holding down the fire button, and this thing's full auto. This next part, and this is pretty cool, this is the nerd coming out in me, is that this is the pattern. No matter what happens, this is the recoil pattern. This is the trait that this Black Scorpion has. All of them have it. Recluse, ARs, hand cannon, snipers. And this is separate from recoil direction. This is recoil pattern. The cool thing, going forward, while in a well, I can take a lot of shots, and I can show what's happening. So while holding down the button, not doing anything else, I start to fire. The recoil pattern starts, it does what it does. However, when I do get shot, when I take incoming fire, it goes all the way back to the start of the video. It goes back to that mechanic. I am off of the hitbox, I am off of the crit, I am off of the head. So what happens is the weapon from the flinch starts pulling towards the head. In this case, to the right, towards my enemy. The second thing to notice is that while it's pulling, it's trying to keep the recoil pattern. It's doing what it did, as if we were just doing a wall test, but since it's being pulled from incoming fire, the flinch mechanic, to the head, is doing the same exact recoil pattern, but in small sections as it's kind of comically inching closer and closer to the crit spot, where it wants to be. And this doesn't matter if the enemy's on the left or on the right. If the enemy was on the left and I shoot, it does this recoil pattern that it always does. The moment I start getting shot, it starts moving towards the enemy's head, and in this case, to the left. So what happens when you throw on unflinching, and in the test case, enhanced scout unflinching for the Black Scorpion? You're going to notice that it does something a little bit different. It kind of inches up, climbing, 
and going to the left. And when you look at them side by side, you can see unflinching in action. And believe me, we're going to keep going and explaining it further. You're going to notice on the left, with no unflinching perk on, it pulls harder towards the target. The shots land apart from each other. You can see each hole, one by one, going towards the target. The one on the right, with enhanced scout unflinching, you're going to notice that it didn't pull as hard to the left, and more importantly, it's keeping the original recoil pattern as it's being flinched, inching towards the target. The shots are doing what the original recoil pattern was doing, but more tightly than without the perk on. And you might be looking at this and thinking about what we talked about in the very first part of the video. Saying, hold up, the one on the left's better because it's getting you to the head faster, or at least it's trying to. You're sitting there thinking, you know what? That's a little bit better way to cheese headshots. But this isn't how a gunfight works. And this is what's so cool to show. When you're actually in a duel, you're going to be on the head, or at least you should be. You're going to at least be in the general area of the critical spot. This clip right here does have on enhanced scout on flinching. For the test, again, I'm doing no recoil control, I just ask them that once you see me start shooting, start laying shots into me. So I start off with my target, and with what's getting ready to be shown, is something that we've always known. It's that distance that you get flinched on and off, going back to that first clip. This happens no matter what, this is a mechanic. For unflinching though, as I start firing, all we're looking for is that when this flinch mechanic starts. It takes a second, that's alright, that doesn't matter. We're just looking for when it catches, and once it catches and is now on the target, at this point it's important to note that it doesn't matter how we got here. In a regular gunfight, you and I would be aimed there in the first place. This would be like first shot accuracy, landing the first shot in a gunfight. We're on the head. In this case though, we happen to be flinched on. I'm not doing anything with recoil direction. So what we're looking at is that the recoil combined with the flinch applied. And just like before, it's moving less and that's what you want, the pull. That means that the weapon is staying true to its original recoil pattern. So as these shots are landing, they're mostly right on the head, but pay attention to the reticle, the dot, the distance it's popping from the flinch received. It's basically like its original recoil pattern, but all it has now is just a little flinch shake. So let's compare that to not having unflinching. Once the flinch mechanic happens and it's being thrown onto the crit spot, that's when you start paying attention. Once it starts landing headshots, look at that crosshair, look at the bounce and the kick that it has. The flinch from the incoming fire makes it bounce a lot, enough to miss shots that actually go off of the target. And again, going back to put this side by side image, it's because of the pull. The flinch is pulling combined with the natural recoil pattern of the scout. They're working opposite of each other. Whereas when you do have unflinching on, it pulls less and it keeps the natural recoil pattern of the weapon used. I know it's confusing. So side by side, the one on the left isn't bouncing as high, it's staying true to what it originally does. Now the one on the right without the unflinching perk, you can see that dot trying to do the original scout recoil pattern, but the flinch mechanic is doing that on and off, on and off. So unflinching is an amazing perk, it works really well. It works, but not how you kind of think that it should. You would think that if you're just aiming down sights at someone taking fire that all that flinch kick would be lessened while in fact unflinching perks are working in the act of you firing and taking fire at the same time. When you see it in action you see how well it's working for you. And you might be wondering how this works with precision weapons or slower shooting weapons or, or weapons that have the no distractions perk. The answer is it's working the exact same but the recipe again is you have to be shooting and being shot at at the same time. So take a sniper rifle. It's very hard to show, but I do have clips, most recently, the Omniscient Eye review I put out last night, and I know that these are some true clips because I felt it working. When I snipe, I always wear Enhanced and Flinching Sniper, always, always. When it happens, you know it happens, you feel it happen, because when you're sniping and you hit that input and they hit an input at the same time, they fire at you, even visually it just looks different, and again, as I've tried to explain, the best way to explain it is that it's trying to do its original recoil pattern. When it works with a sniper, it kind of feels like a laser beam, it's on a rope. As those two inputs happen, it kind of locks that shot in and goes straight. So as we both shoot each other and I land the shot, it's like it just stays there after I take the shot. Now in this scenario, if I waited a second more and his shot hit me first, I would flinch up and off. But since it happened at the same time, the perk worked. But that's the recipe, being shot and you are shooting, both inputs happening at the same time. It works with no distractions on a scout, a sniper, a machine gun. For all weapons, all inflinging perks work on all of them doing what was shown in the video today. The enhanced perks way more than the lesser versions. I would like to thank you for sticking around. I hope that you learned something. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, you're amazing and I'm thankful for you every day. And also like and comment if you guys see fit. Let's talk about it in the comment section. Thank you for watching and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.